Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast. We've gotten a lot of messages to get this guy on the show. Mm-hmm. And uh-huh. look, during the quarantine, we've been able to get everyone um, because no one's doing anything. Therefore, if somebody says no, they're just an asshole. Right. Yeah. It's, no it's not even like, uh, a case of like, oh man, they're super busy. No, no, they, it's, it's be- not true. It's because they hate veterans and hate America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy hates neither. He doesn't hate America. He doesn't ha- hate veterans. We got Leon Lush on the show today. Yeah. How are you, buddy? Oh, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Happy to be on the show, man. Dude, we're happy to have you. Dude, I, I we follow your YouTube. Um, I think you have somewhere close to 2 million subscribers. You were Creeping, funny yeah. as shit, dude. Your videos are, are some of our favorites. You and Brandon Rogers, I think, are our two favorites on, on YouTube You're too right now. kind. You're too kind. I'm glad you're enjoying it, man. <laughs> I have fun making them, so uh, it's, it's fun to hear. Sometimes you never know who's watching you, you know, and occasionally you hear somebody that you follow yourself or know about is, like, watching your videos. You get a message, and it's just uh, it's interesting through the years, so you find out, enjoys uh, the YouTube videos. Just some dude sitting in his fucking... Little office talking shit about <laughs> stupid people. Yeah, yeah your we, videos about the the priests are my end all be all <laughs> favorite. Copeland, yeah. God damn it, I laugh my until boy, I cry on those he's, things. He's the COVID COVID nineteen that guy. Yeah. yeah, you've done a number. The of winds of God, that. I blow that. Yeah, <laughs> Kenny Kenny's my guy. He's he's given me three. I think at this point, three quality videos over the last two years. I've made some others on some other prosperity preachers, but they're just like ripe for fodder. Man, they're so fun to just shit on like and i you know i don't do it i don't do it like coming from a place of like shitting on religion but these guys individuals like particularly like the prosperity preachers they're just out out of control they're yeah out of control. for for religion he's like the version uh, the version of a <clears throat> vegan who thinks that people who he meets should go to jail basically he's that far yeah, to the yeah, extreme yeah. of whatever it, the fuck they're believing exactly it's funny because i get a ton of comments on those videos that are like hey christian here we totally don't endorse this guy and think he's actually uh, a glaring example of the things we don't like mm-hmm. <laughs> i was like well there you go yeah it's funny i thought the catholic church was going to put one of those out about fucking children yeah they never did yeah no, no never, never did. did no uh, they just, just uh, slept kept going on under that. the yeah. blast with them. i mean your guys <laughs> newspaper fucking handled it pretty well i guess right? yeah yeah that was uh that was an interesting that did you seen that movie? I would imagine covering that whole story. That was quite a yeah. quite a uh, quite a story. I didn't know that Lee Schreiber uh, even was a journalist until no. I watched that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed that everything that's happening in the movie is real. So yeah, like the actual, have, it's the actual people that blew that story up were the actors. Yeah. As well. Have you ever <laughs> yeah. been watching yeah. a movie and they're like, "We can't find this guy," and I'm like, "It's fucking Morgan Freeman, dude. Everybody knows what he was <laughs> Ask, have you seen Morgan Freeman? No. All right, let's go. Yeah. It's that fucking easy. <laughs> I could write movies. <laughs> yeah. You can give it a go. Yeah. Give, give it a go. Um, how did you get you started, Leon? Oh, uh, dude, that's a that's a, a long story. I'll try to give you the nutshell of it. But uh, 2008, uh, graduated college, kind of had a, a little bit of an existential crisis. And um, I, was in, I got a sales job out of college, making good money, doing pretty well, and did it for a year. Just realized... It wasn't for me. Hated it. I wasn't the sales guy. Knew I wasn't going to do the office thing. Traveled cross country to San Diego with my best my best buddy at the time. He was moving out there for two weeks and kind of had this life epiphany that um, just wanted to be this creative guy that did shit. So spent a lot of years trying to be a musician, singer, songwriter. That's how I really got started on YouTube was uploading fucking covers in 2008 <laughs> for a couple years. And then... Uh, that didn't go anywhere, and I joined a band and fell off the online thing for years while I was playing locally, touring around New England a little bit with the band I was in. And then about 2016, amicably left that situation. I was getting older, settling down with my now wife, and I was like, yeah, you know what? Why don't I just take the time I was spending in the band and reallocate it and try to get something going online? Uh, and that was when I really started to take it seriously. And I was just kind of ideating all types of shit at the time, didn't really know what I was good at, what I wanted to do, and eventually fell into this kind of, I guess you call it the, the commentary type of thing where you're just talking about stuff that's going on on the internet. And for me, the goal was always trying to provide comic relief through whatever I did and uh, ended up just kind of honing that and uh, been doing that since, you know, 2016, late 2016, and was able to start doing it full time. Uh, throughout all these years, too, I was a restaurant guy, working in restaurants, bartending, serving in steakhouses and shit. And then uh, late 2018, I was had a, a really, really big month on YouTube that kind of elevated my channel, and I was able to quit and start doing it full-time. So yeah, it's fucking lot, crazy, man. 
A lot of questions here. First of all, what genre of music did you play, and what was the name of the band? It was uh, K-pop, right? If I remember correctly, <laughs> was it Korean? Yeah, pop? it was. It was Korean pop. Yeah, I had the wig the whole nine. It was. I was really good at it too. It was tough. It's. It was tough a little bit because I'm like six three, like two seventy, so people didn't really buy it, but. We had a good run. But, Can you uh, imagine a 6'3", 270 Korean woman? Just, yes. <laughs> yes, it would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, she would be the most famous person in Korea, like in the yeah. history, north or south. You'd have, to, you'd have to be the top for that one. That would be, that oh, would be yeah. an experience. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and by but, the way, you, but, you like the, the restaurant background makes total sense. You look like every yeah. dirt bag in one of those. Yeah. Uh, who, who's it? John Taffy? A Morton <laughs> Steakhouse bartender. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like, yeah. you definitely like you w- pork some fucking mid-40s uh, yeah. <laughs> like bartenders, waitresses. And if I need cocaine, you may not have some, but you definitely know where to get it. Yeah, you, you know, know, you you it, know how you can get it. Absolutely. Yeah. I Pretty much stereotypical hipster dude with a beard, like slinging <laughs> drinks in your steakhouse, right? Like smooching it with all the 45-year-old women that are lonely because their husbands work too much, <laughs> the whole nine yards. Um. But so uh, happy to leave, dude. I'll tell you, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about the world working in a restaurant. You really do. Mm. Maybe not the world. You learn a lot about people. Um, But the band I was in, I mean, we played like it was like West Coast rock, blues, like Sublime, Chili Pepper influenced. It was kind of just like a bunch of stoners like playing, jamming and making songs out of it. They brought me in. I was kind of the songwriter guy because I came from the songwriting background, and we turned like a jam band into kind of a cohesive thing did an ep and album uh the name of the band was skinny cleveland we no reason we called it that uh i don't even know i don't even honestly remember how we came up with that name again it was just a a bunch of stoners making music that name uh, one more time what was it skinny from cleveland skinny cleveland oh god yeah yeah (laughs) yeah i think it was about uh, uh, drew carey no that would (laughs) when he got thin no he got thin for that one like year and a half period yeah it was i think it i think it really originated yeah, I think it originated actually from Cleveland, from Family Guy. I don't know, like a skinny Cleveland. It just mm. yeah, oh, like Quagmire. Right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Quagmire yeah. Cleveland. You're more of a Quagmire, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giggity, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I grew up, man. I, mean, I was fucking freshman in high school when that show came out. That shit was my religion for mm. for years back <clears> in the day. Everybody, everybody. And then now there's a whole yeah. new generation of people that are that are hooked on that well, shit. Well, do you think it's weird yeah. that a generation of people who were raised on Family Guy, South Park, and et cetera, are so easily offended by everything? That's weird to me. It is it is bizarre. But yeah. you but at the same time, I feel like it almost skews younger. Some of the people that get like even like even South Park now, like staples, like the office, there's just these weird hate trains on Twitter. I've seen I've seen the show Friends getting going viral because there was like an insensitive episode there's some of the fucking dumbest shit you can even imagine and a lot of this comes from either uh k-pop fans or (laughs) or you know typically it i I, listen it skews every age range but a lot of it you see is the kids that were raised on like the twitter generation these younger teens right now early 20s whatever and it's not all of them but it's it's a wild it's a wild landscape Internet, yeah, right and it keeps getting wilder. I mean, uh, yeah. the head of Disney Plus just left to become the CEO of TikTok. In what yeah, world does that, that exist? Um, and then, you know, in particular, look, the Joe Rogan deal that went through, I wanted to chat with you about because sure. it, it, it appeared to me in this Joe Rogan deal that he wanted to get off of YouTube and get out of their censorship. Now, Dan sure. and I are, are huge fans of your channel. <laughs> You swear you. a lot. I'm surprised any of your videos are monetized. Yeah, I'll be honest. The working in the YouTube ecosystem uh, is challenging when you're not a neutered, cookie cutter, fucking all smiles idiot. Um, and it's especially in 2017 when it really kind of the ad apocalypse all came down and this demonetization thing, and it's just kind of gotten progressively worse well little things get better as it kind of gets progressively harder as a whole um, but i've gotten really good at knowing kind of what it is that pisses youtube off swears are generally okay as long as it's not within the first 30 seconds of the video ah it, that is a thing as long Shit, as, alec it, that's, yeah. that's what i told you i was like man i heard a yeah. rumor that's true there is a there's a there things are weighted a lot heavier in the first 30 to 60 seconds um for whatever reason, just because of how it's scraped or whatever, just to kind of setting the pace for that video. So I'm careful about that. Um, I still censor certain things, but I, there was a period where I censored everything and I just couldn't be fucked. I couldn't be, I couldn't do that forever. So 
sometimes I'll censor things, but I, I've, I've loosened up a little bit more. Um, but it's really it's more about controversial things. Like if you're if you're talking if you're talking about politics or shit that's like left and right shit that's going like good luck, dude. God bless if you're trying to make a living on YouTube. Um, or if you're talking about news, current events, anything that's going on, God bless to that as well. I hope you have a Patreon. Um, <laughs> part of the, I, I, quite quite honestly, one of the reasons why I do what I do, the, the topics I talk about, because I can make funny videos while talking about things that I know isn't most of the time gonna piss YouTube off because I'm rustling feathers, whatever. I mean, I don't, I can't always avoid it. Obviously, people get pissed sometimes. I make jokes that are insensitive or whatever, which is fine. But uh, yeah, I've just gotten good. Had to adapt. Now there is a, there is an element of it where it sucks. Like I want to make sure I'm being true to myself and I'm like delivering the comedy that I like. But I also have to, you know, run a business and have a family to support doing it. So I have to find that balance. And obviously, as Joe Rogan right now. You know, find other streams of revenue so that YouTube ad revenue isn't your lifeline. Because if you depend solely on that, they can, whoo, you, they can flip you upside down, flip you for real, real quick. If, if yeah, not, we, we've had we've had friends lose, you know, essentially their jobs because mm -hmm. they treated YouTube mm -hmm. like a job. And when that mm -hmm. uh, adpocalypse came down, a lot of them were like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do now. And it, it was kind yeah. of scary. It, it felt like a massive form of censorship to me i was excited to see that spotify deal in particular because spotify me too wasn't traditionally like a, a video channel at all i know they've tried it in 2016 but besides youtube you essentially had nowhere else to go to put up video um you could yep. go to vimeo but that's not on smart tvs and the the user face isn't yeah. friendly well it's funny doug yeah. uh, stanhope just came out with a new live special mm -hmm. comedian doug stanhope and he released it on uh vimeo but it was supposed to go on iTunes and Amazon and a couple of other places, and they're still they're in a holding pattern to to release it because they're they're still going over whether or not they want to release it or not. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it's gonna keep it's getting Doug's, worse and it's worse. It's Doug man. Stanhope, man. Yeah. It's you know what he's gonna say. If you don't like it, don't fucking listen. It's really that easy. Yeah. I mean, I don't, that's I don't, true. I don't know what the problem is. There, uh, it, it seems YouTube, like there's gonna be. I, I I thought at some point there would be a lawsuit where because. The use of these platforms became so ubiquitous that it becomes almost like a public utility, the same way that phones 100%. are a public utility. Like AT and T can't call me and say, "Hey, you can't use my phone because I don't agree with what you do in your personal life." Right. They but can't just do that. real quick, real quick, we learned that some of these Silicon Valley companies can and will do that, even if there's backlash. Like, what the fuck are we? Like, what are we going to do about it? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, yeah, what you're going to do about these... it is Joe Rogan's going to take his hundred million dollar yeah. company somewhere else. Yep. That's what, well. So, that's that's why I love to see it at at the top level, at the very top level of podcasting right now. To see a move like that is is uh, is incredible. I think it's a good move because it shows that you know what. Listen, you, you're you're losing the amount of traffic they're going to lose from that move is 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 insane. And obviously, YouTube has kind of monopolized the video sharing industry. It, it'll still be a little bit of, of a blip on their map in the grand scheme of things, but it's. It's nice when you introduce competition like that, and I hope it. I hope it works out. Not only works out for Joe, but continues to to create this atmosphere where it's not like it doesn't have to be YouTube. Like it would be nice for there to be other options because, like you said, man, it's like they these guys. You it's these these social media platforms are utilities now. They're part of life. They're it's mm -hmm. they're ubiquitous and. There needs to be a level of responsibility that allows for people to exist on those platforms when they aren't liked by the people who own the platforms. Right. But we haven't seen a lot of good evidence of that being uh, allowed. So, yeah, and I'm, fi I'm fine with uh, with bifurcating between adult and not adult content. Like if you don't want to. Sure. Th there should be some kind of functionality where if you don't want to hear yeah. your kids swearing, you don't have to or you don't you, you don't want your, your kids to hear swearing. You shouldn't have to, I guess. But right. when it's a matter of politics, like if somebody has a different political opinion than you and it's a public utility and you're able to uh, take away that public utility to stop them from speaking, that's a problem yeah. for me. You know what I mean? Same. Yeah, same. I mean, the whole thing with Alex Jones, obviously, you guys have had him on the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that was he. I feel like he was one of the, one of the bigger the biggest profile cases where obviously he had a, a large reach, a loud voice in that space. And Alex is, you know, he's. He's uh he's an interesting guy. He's entertaining, but uh, just to see him kind of all of a sudden they overnight like Patreon, like even Patreon, like where they're literally just a conduit for your fans to support you, 
and they took that away from him. Like that's insanity. What, just because they don't agree with mm-hmm. what he's saying, and uh, yeah, it's 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 just it was that was kind of a wake up call for like, all right, man, you you gotta these these people are really trying to shape the conversation the way they want it to be shaped. I feel like at the highest levels, and mm-hmm. um, it's good that there's people fighting against that. I'm not one of those people in, in, in my line of work and kind of the videos that I make uh, by choice mostly, or I don't know if I have the fucking stomach for it, but uh, I'm glad that there is people that are that are championing that role and trying to create equal speech and allow people to to have opinions that are, are not that of these these corporations that, that own these ubiquitous utilities that we mm. use. Yeah, and you know, uh, for me, I agree with you, Dan. I think there should be YouTube kids because look, I have two kids. Um, there's yeah. YouTube kids, and I think there should be a YouTube after dark. You know, if you want to call it that, of like, hey man, when you turn on this channel, they're gonna be saying fuck. I'm not saying nudity because that's too hard to control and enforce, and especially sure. with a, a platform sure. as big as YouTube. I think that would be a monster to try to get behind to decide what's right and wrong, uh, yeah. porn wise and all that other shit. Well, the dumbest part about it to me is that it helps YouTube. To have people log in because they get the data then. Yes. Right? It's not just about collecting cookies. It's about collecting. Like if you're, no matter what industry you're in, if you're in media, you want to be collecting phone numbers and email addresses as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And for a company that large, especially one owned by Google, you think they would be going out of their way to make sure people logged in. So a tiered system like that, based on the the viewability of content, makes perfect sense from a marketing standpoint. I don't know why they don't do it. To be honest, the only reason that I can think of that they wouldn't do it is what they've espoused publicly, is that they're clearly on one side of a political argument and they don't care about the other side. That seems to be the case. And the real problematic part of that whole Alex Jones thing to me wasn't necessarily just that one or more platforms took him down. It was that all of them did it, and all of them did it in a very short period of time, which implies that they talked to each other about doing it. Oh, yeah, closed closed doors meetings, like uh, orchestrated. I agree. It was like, hey, they were all in the like they were on a fucking Zoom call, and like, should we just pull the plug on this guy? Like all these, all these CEOs or whatever, who's ever in charge of, of uh, giving people reach on these platforms, and and they kind of all decided at the same time. It seemed, which is same thing with uh, Milo yeah. Yiannopoulos. Yeah, my, Milo mm. was the same thing, but uh, Alex had told us on the show that it was around three fifteen in the morning where all of them, it was a coordinated attack, had pulled him off of everything, uh, iTunes, YouTube, all that other stuff. He also said his PayPal got shut down. And yeah, that was I had heard that too. I know I've heard PayPal doing that as well, which is even crazier than Patreon because they, yeah. I can't even imagine. I've heard weird, sketchy stories about PayPal, PayPal freezing people's accounts and mm-hmm. doing some crazy shit. And I don't know if it's always political, but in Alex Jones's case, probably it was if they were involved in that. It seems I mean, weird it, that PayPal would do that. Started by they did Elon, it to Amir Elon, King, too, Elon, by the way. They did it to uh, to uh, a couple of people, a lot of people on that side of the fence. But it, like a company started by Elon Musk and Peter Thiel, it doesn't seem like either one of those guys would be complicit in silencing people on the right. Well, they sold the company is the problem. Yeah. So they were out yeah, of there. So it depends on who owns it now and, and for what right. reasons and why. Uh, for, for you personally, um, yeah. are you a hundred percent satisfied with the videos you are making or is there some things that you just nuke all together where you're like, dude, this, this could get me in trouble and I'm not even going to go there with this. Uh, I would, I would say it's like 90, 10, like tip. Like I'll I'll never do a whole video and be like, Oh, this was bad. This might be controversial. If I'm going to invest my time and make a video, like I've thought about it ahead of time, I'll commit to it. Even if I know maybe it's going to, rustle some feathers but i do find myself uh whether i'm like recording some videos with my editor josh we do some stuff on my second channel um we'll be recording her and i'll say something i'll be like should we keep that in like am i can i should i say that and i hate i hate that like because i want to just be able to say what i want to say because i feel like i'm a pretty good dude so even if i'm making a joke that might come off as offensive or edgy like i'm fucking kidding like that's what i do I, I, I joke and I make people laugh for a living, or at least I try to. Um, so it does, you know, there is always an element of feeling like I have to be a little bit careful. Um, but I'm still trying to push the envelope where I can, or at least try and be myself as best I can. But it's the reality of it. Listen, like, there's a lot of, you know, 
I feel incredibly blessed to be able to do what I do and like full time and um, <clears throat> um, live very comfortably right now compared to a lot of people in the world. And I have to accept the reality that that is because of, you know, <clears throat> the luxuries I've been afforded by having an audience that I've built on these platforms. And the reality is that these platforms have rules and <clears throat> I was the one that decided to build the, that audience on those platforms. So I need to play by the rules to the level that will enable me to continue running that business. And if I really want to, you know, <clears throat> take it somewhere else, cause I need to, but for what I'm doing, like I said, it's, it's not, <clears throat> I was never, I, it's not like I, I really want to make a video about politics and I'm just not because I'm afraid that's just not really my bag. Mm. So I still feel like I'm making good, funny videos. Um, and you know, the, the more right and left stuff, the more controversial stuff isn't really my strength anyway. So I'm not like leaving those on the table because of the, the landscape online right now. It's, mm. it's, it's more just about little jokes here and there that I sometimes have to rein in because it might piss somebody off. Yeah. I mean, look, and Frank's birthday is coming up. It's June 12th. And, yeah. uh, I'd like to see you do a video on her. On Anne Frank? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just a 15 minute fucking roast. No, it's not. Frank. You're not roasting Anne Frank. You're roasting the fact oh. that we took this teenage girl's diary after she got murdered and made it a oh, piece okay. of literature. Maybe. I like that. That seems like weird that. to me. I've, no one's ever accounted for that. Like, who who was the first person to come across that diary? Like, hey, you know what we should do? We should expose this woman. Yeah, <laughs> all of her <laughs> deepest, darkest secrets and fears. I, I, I would say this. We got two biggies coming up. Uh, we got yeah. uh, the death of Harambe in mm. about eight days that That's we got to celebrate, yeah. and then obviously yeah. Anne Frank's every, birthday. Mm, and um, every year we go hard. We go really hard for Frank, Dan, and I. I tell you what, if, <laughs> if Anne Frank had had Harambe with her, yep, she probably would have lived. Still be alive She'd today. She'd probably still be alive. Yeah, yeah no doubt. So. Harambe is the ultimate protector, but he himself unfortunately couldn't protect himself from the power of himself. Well, look, you either die a hero or you live long enough to become a villain, right? Isn't that what they said <laughs> to become, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To become what, Harambe. Are you classifying Harambe as a villain or a hero? Um, no, he died a hero. Okay, good. But yeah. had he lived longer, he probably would have eaten that child. There's a lot of people yeah, he, that he think would, he's a villain. Yeah. And he I just want to make sure we're on the same side of the fence. Can you imagine if he had just picked that child up and peeled it from the head down like a banana? <laughs> just skinned it, <laughs> ripped its arms I mean, off, know. and beat it to death with it? <laughs> 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 I don't know. Oh man, uh, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be it'd be a much yeah, different. Around meme. here for Anne Frank, we go we go real hard. Um, you know, we do a <laughs> Dude, big German it. thing, and uh, actually, Dan hides somewhere in the office, and then I try to find him. Yeah, but I yeah, can't stop. Good. I can't stop eating potato chips, so he can hear. Yeah, me it's like the, it's like the classic. Cards. You can hear a pin drop, but you're just looking around and just the. Yeah, we don't have an one of those either, so it's, it's difficult. <laughs> oh, that's difficult, but it's, you know, you get creative when you role play. I know yeah. how it goes. So you guys seem like creative guys. I do you have a nice make wig. It happen. Uh, yeah. Really nice wig. Um, yeah. What's what's next for you down the down the pipe, would you say? Because I, to, to me, a guy like you, I'm surprised you don't have your own podcast. Um, I see a lot of YouTube people doing it. I see, uh, you know, Logan Paul yeah. is very successful. Uh, is that Good a time. thought for you at some point down the line? Hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's. I'm already in the works. Uh, listen, I I'm at a place right now in my career on YouTube where I you know I have a good thing going. I've I've built uh, a channel in the vertical that I'm in now, but uh, not only to diversify what I do for the the health of my business, but just for my own sanity to get on and do stuff like this, talk with other people around the globe, other guys and whatever, just kind of shoot the shit. Um, I need that for my own well-being and health because I can only take the piss out of fucking losers on the internet so many times before I want to fucking. <laughs> and the good thing is, just going up on our channel, so you can say whatever you want. We're not monetized yeah. at all. I said earlier, yeah, I was like, we're making fucking three hundred dollars off this goddamn channel a month. Uh, <laughs> fuck, fuck, if you think we're getting rich yeah. off YouTube? Not a goddamn prayer. We had a porn no, star on, you know, a couple of, uh, months ago, and we just read off. Yeah. I just went through Pornhub and read off a hundred videos she was in to see if she remembered every <laughs> single one of them, and she did. So. <laughs> Did she remember everyone? Mm. Every Good single one. Photographic memory on this porn star. Could not Ooh. believe it. Yeah, she sees, like, instead of counting sheep at night, it's just dicks jumping. Yeah. <laughs> you think with that type of memory, she could have gotten dick. into she could have gotten into quant instead of getting into dicks, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know uh, by the way, are all your meetings and all that shit on Zoom these days? Is this what you're doing? Are you stuck? Uh, 
Listen, I, I, I run a pretty small ship. It's literally me and my editor. So, like, I am, like, I do do a bunch of Zoom shit, but I'm not, like, doing a lot of running the business on Zoom. It's just, like, phone calls with my guy, and then I pretty much handle everything else through email right now. <laughs> um, family stuff with meetings, and we've reintroduced. I'm seeing some family members and stuff, obviously. Um, on fans but, only? Uh, yeah, on yeah. OnlyFans, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's actually my strongest revenue stream is OnlyFans. <laughs> I just don't talk about it publicly as much. Yeah, I watched your uh, chiropractor, YouTube chiropractor breakdown the other day. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah. I'm sure most of the women that were in that video have OnlyFans accounts, if I had to guess. 100%. Absolutely. Either that or they're just caking, they're caking it on Instagram by, you know, nothing but ass cheeks up there. Yeah. Um, but more power to them for, you know, capitalizing on the hustle. But, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that video got demonetized real hard. It started off, it was like crushing. It was going crazy. And then like a day and a half in, it got demonetized and just flatlined. I was like, sick. I love when that happens. And I don't even know. I, I, I like went to bat for it too. I was like, this is bullshit. I was like, all these chiropractors and their fucking thumbnails with the tits and the pussies out practically, like still monetized. And then I make a video about it, kind of making jokes, talking critically about them exploiting kind of this sexual side of chiropracting. That's a fucking word. Uh, to make money online, and I'm the one that gets demonetized. And I, I come to find out after going through like five channels, someone was like, "Oh, it's because you made a joke and said the word Pornhub." I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I can't even." And I censored it. I literally, I made a joke about uh, one of the thumbnails being a Brazzers, uh, a Brazzers logo away from being on the wrong wrong website because mm -hmm. it literally looked like a porn thumbnail just without the Brazzers logo. Um, and I censored the word porn because that's I was just like, oh, that's probably YouTube's weird about sexual stuff. And they still they still fucking bag. I, I it, like so, the yeah. part of that video where the doctor, the old white man doctor is telling the yeah. young Instagram model that he prefers when they show up wearing <laughs> fucking yoga pants. And yeah. He's staring right at her ass from behind. When he's doing yeah. Like, yeah. I really like yeah. when you wear yoga pants, like staring right at her ass. So, I really yeah, like when you guys helps. come in wearing yoga pants. It really helps to manipulate your body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it helps ah, us dude. get the full picture. So we know what we're yeah. doing. And the girl's like, Oh yeah, I'm sure it does. And he's just, he's like got his notepad. Like again, looking like the beginning of a fucking porn. Yeah. That was uh that was a fun video though. That was a funny mm -hmm. one. I thought, I thought that one came out good. What's, what's your favorite? What's the, what, what's your favorite video that you've ever made? God, that would take some thinking like, um, it may be cliche because it's probably it's like my most viewed video and what you know the video that kind of blew up my channel in 2018 but i did a a, a trilogy essentially uh on these australian brothers um that basically were like fa like faking their own death to try and get like likes and subscriptions and doing like iphone giveaways in the same video where he was saying that his brother was going to die from this disease and it it turned into this really weird thing where i think they almost believed the bullshit they were spewing because they were like <clears throat> they ended up flying to america from australia to see this chiropractor who like claimed that he could cure their kidney stones and this guy had like edema from a kidney problem and he he said that he could cure it through chiropractic adjustments and it was a whole shit show, but uh, the videos are fucking hilarious, and they, yeah, it was, uh, they blew up and went a little viral, and that was what really put me uh, into that next tier on YouTube. Uh, my channel went from, like, fucking, I think I was at 250,000 subs at the time, and then I did a video about them. They made a response, God bless them, and then I responded to that and just destroyed them, <laughs> like, a day later, and that, they, both of those videos were, like, going viral at the same time, and my channel, like, I gained, like, 500,000 subs almost wow. in a month. Well, you know, they're, um, uh, they're not too far off <clears throat> with what they're saying, at least based on the, uh, I don't know what you would want to call it, the theology of chiropractic, because the original, the guy who invented this shit believed that he was cracking demons out of your joints and that those yeah, demons sure. were responsible for cancer and blood diseases and shit like that. They are. That's, that's, that's true. That sounds no, about right. No, that, that sounds yeah, about that's right. that's 100% true. No, it's stupid. It's all stupid. So <laughs> It's the, it's the let's, demons, let's definitely. from that. <laughs> yeah. uh, here's but yeah, why I, I just hate thought... using Zoom. Um, is the the gaps and the ins and outs of conversation and the pauses. Yeah. Uh, God damn it! I'm so fucking tired of talking to people on Zoom. I wish you were in the studio. <laughs> you were an awesome Fuck fucking yeah. dude. And there's gonna be some weird, awkward pauses in this where it's like, I wonder if they were laughing together, having a good time. We just couldn't figure it the yeah. fuck out, you know, on Zoom. <laughs> Yeah, Maybe. no, you know, that's, that's one of the sacrifices we make with a fucking global pandemic taking everybody out. 
I, I, still did you f- do still a, f- uh, the fear of God and everybody? Yeah. Did you do a video about that midget that was pretending to be, or that that yeah that midget that was pretending to be a child from what was it Illinois? <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> from Doctor Phil. What was his name? No, I never did a video, and I don't know what the consensus of that was. Did he end up being nine? I, I think he's a dwarf, but he oh, was no, really that, like a teenager, right? Yeah, that's the Australian really- kid. <clears throat> no, this was a white woman in Illinois, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh. Th- it was a white woman in Illinois, uh, and they had the, the kid was from like Croatia or something, Romania. I think yeah, that's where yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, they had this this midget, sh- uh, should I say midget, dwarf, uh, maybe sure. dwarfer? I think dw- small person. Uh, is little that, person. Is that bad? Little person. Little I think that's person, pretty racist right. what you I, just did. To me, I feel like little person is way worse person than racist. Yeah, that's what, I what feel you that just way said. Too, we should I've, apologize for it. I've, yeah, sorry, everybody listening right now. I meant dwarf. <laughs> Quest, question mark. All I know, all I know, is that midget is no longer deemed acceptable. I think by the mainstream. So, um, no, but isn't there a fucking television show called like Little People, and it's based on like families of dwarfs? So L- little if people, they're doing big that world. on yeah. if they're doing that shit on TLC, like come on, you can't blame us for using that as a, a way to describe. It. Them? What, if, what if they came out? What if TLC came out with a show called Puerto Ricans? I'm sure that's next. Do you know for a while? So TLC, they were calling it st- stood for the Little Channel. No. Yes, because no. they were doing at one point mm. they were doing seven midgetized shows at once. Midgetized what? is definitely not a word. <laughs> I, I think it is. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's it almost is, like monetized. It, that was never a thing it, until you know digital. Monetized is always a bit of a word. Midgetized is definitely a word. I think uh, anyways, uh, one of them just died. R.I.P. Minnie from Atlanta, the little black one. She died. Sure. Yeah, I remember her actually. That sucks. God damn. They're, uh, TLC puts out some real trash. They're fucking extreme. <laughs> They're extreme cheapskates. It's, I mean, and it's all like scripted bullshit and I, you know, you hear about the producers going in and making people do things that they wouldn't normally just to make the show seem more ludicrous, blah, blah, blah. But you know, people eat that shit up. So you know, wherever the money is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Our, our producer clearly doesn't know how to spell midget because I was trying. No. I was looking at the screen as he was typing shit. No, M I D G. No, that's how it goes. Not a prayer. Uh, uh, there's two places I remember where I was in my life. Um, when JFK got shot and I wasn't born, um, and sure. then when Minnie died um, the other day in that that, that <laughs> car accident. And I was DLC. on the toilet. For me, it was 9/11 and when phone. Joe Biden was talking about his hairy legs. Ah, that's right. Yeah. Those are two Those, big ones. Yeah. I don't remember Biden talking about his legs, but I, oh, you I'd haven't like seen that video with that? Dude, holy no, shit! That's Alex. Send like him that video after this is over. Yeah, is it an old clip or is it? Uh, Say so yeah, we, we got to send the the Biden video over uh, in a, in a hot second. Yeah. Um, what's your like? What was your go to? What was your inspiration growing up as far as videos goes? Of like, hey man, I want to do this. Oh Jesus, dude! I was I would classify myself as someone who had no fucking clue what I wanted to do, right? So fat, pretty fat kid, got into weightlifting, powerlifting. I actually uh, powerlifted competitively in high school up in New Hampshire. Had a couple state records at the time, <clears throat> and uh, that kind of became my identity. That side of things in football, and then I ended up. Uh, you know, through high school, was an athlete and didn't play football in college for various reasons, but continued down the fitness line. I have an exercise science, a bachelor of science in exercise physiology um, that obviously I, I don't use now. Um, but throughout my life, it's always just been about like uh, just wanting, to, I don't know, like I, it was never like a hard and fast thing. I always knew, I always felt like I wanted to do something that was me kind of creating something, whether it was music initially 10, 15 years ago, and now it's kind of like creating comedy style videos. Um, but as a kid, it was more just like video games and how do I not be so fat? That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, because I always go back to like what your first comedy was, you know, when that really changed you. Um, Mine okay. is still like Eddie Murphy Delirious. And I was too young at the time, obviously, when it actually came out. And I didn't catch it till years later. And that's when I was like, oh, shit, that this is the greatest thing of all time. Yeah. I think mine was The that Jerk. Makes... Mm. God, that's a great it's one. one of the first comedy movies, like adult comedy movies that I, ever, that I remember watching. So I like that you brought that up because I was looking at your question through the wrong lens there, thinking about like traditional career paths. But I think for me, like where I spent most of my time, some of the movies I remember the most fondly, um, uh, Tommy Boy and Black Sheep, I'm a big time Chris Farley fan, uh, which a lot of people will say when they watch my videos that they see that in me, just the way I kind of rage out on certain things like that. In um, his uh, his SNL, the DVD of his SNL 
compilation mm-hmm. was like I watched that I watched that shit a thousand times and another one was Ace the original Ace Ventura was mm-hmm. one of the first comedies my brother I watched it with my brother when I was like seven or something and I, I've seen that movie probably 150 times um, so kind of Jim Carrey and Chris Farley style of comedy really shaped my I, I think the way I interpreted comedy and tried to make people laugh growing up for sure <clears throat> Uh, was there anybody that's following your channel right now that you were shocked or somebody that's liked your video that you admired that you were like, holy shit, I can't believe so-and-so is watching this right now? Uh, yeah, actually, Post Malone, mm. I've talked to in DMs. He's watched some of my videos, um, thought those were pretty funny. I was like, that one fucking blew my mind a little bit. But he's been known to like be, like, he's kind of been friendly with some YouTubers in the community. Like, he's a big fan of Cody Co. some of these other guys that are in similar uh, similar style channels as mine. Um, some WWE guys like Zelina Vega and Alistair Black are both fans of the channel. Um, and there's there's been a few more. Um, but yeah, it is. It's always it's always a very surreal experience when like you get a, a DM from somebody that either you know you you look up to as someone you like or just someone you're like, wow, that is just a, a mind fuck that this person watches me make videos from my office it's, it's kind of wild <laughs> that's awesome uh, yeah, yeah look post malone for us is a big one uh he's supposed to have been on the show numerous times we always get yeah. trash and just have a good time with him but i, I mm-hmm. took twenty thousand dollars off of him in a in a beer pong game about two months I watched, ago i i definitely saw the episode where you talked about that yeah yeah and, yeah, uh, yeah he dude, that, fucking, that guy's as real as they come man he, like he's 100 he lives that life mm-hmm. that, that money 100%. was wired three hours later yeah we were drinking yeah. with him in a parking lot one day and yeah, yeah, we, we went to a Cowboys game. Yeah, we were like, hey, you should come on the show. He's like, yeah, what do you want to talk about? And we're like, we talk about whatever you want. He goes, I want to talk about guns. I'm like, all right, cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, by the way, Perfect. can you guys get me a 50 cal machine gun? I'm like, I mean, technically, yes, but that's a weird question to ask someone you just met, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Dan's <laughs> response to him, too, was like, right. I mean, yeah, I can get you that. He goes, if you want, I know a place where you can just pay a fee and you can go murder an actual human. That's true, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's a gray area. Technically. Yeah, yeah. Just, the Zimbabwean government will take you out into the bush and let you hunt poachers for about $85,000, give or take. Yeah. That's insane. I don't know how I've heard that somewhere, but it's it's poachers, right? That you're hunting mm-hmm. essentially. Yeah. 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 And yeah. And, and there's this this Qatari cruise line had a thing where you could go hunt uh, Somali pirates too. Like you just cruise. Ooh. You just it's a bunch of armed dudes on a cruise ship, and you just cruise around, do the cruise ship stuff, and wait for somebody to attack you, and those in that area, and then you fucking light their ass up. God damn it! Jesus. That's the best. I just yeah. want to. I, so, I want one time to say to a bunch of Somalians, "I am the captain now." That's it. It's all I want in life. <laughs> well, they don't really yeah. probably so, speak English. Yeah. Oh well, whatever. I think they've seen the movie. What? Uh, as long down? as yeah, I was gonna no, say, as long uh, as there's a camera there captain filming, yeah, they do. Yeah, <laughs> as long as you film it, they'll speak English for the camera. What if What if Tom Hanks shows up? In Somalia, <laughs> he's just he's just like looking around, like fuck all you motherfuckers. Oh, that'd be so good. You know, I tried to Thanks. hire that guy for a movie. The guy who got nominated for an Oscar uh, with the nine names. I am the captain now. That guy because he got nominated yes, for an yeah, Oscar. He, he so did. I, had, yeah, I, I tried that. to hire him for this movie I did called Helen Keller versus Night Wolves. Mm-hmm. And the only reason I wanted to hire him <laughs> was to so I could put in the trailer an Academy Award nominee, Alu Akbar, yes. whatever his name is. Mm-hmm. Yes, and yeah. <laughs> his agents were like, no, dude, we're not doing that to him. Like, he just came over to America, blah, blah, blah. Or he was he was driving a cab in, like, uh, Minneapolis then after that. So what, like, he's better than Bill Shatner and Danny Trail? That's what I said. I don't think so, brother. I, and it was, it was uh, we offered him five grand for the day, and it was like a two-hour. I, I even narrowed down his window and said, look, you're only going to be working for two hours. That's it. <laughs> Um, and they, his agent said no. I don't think he would have. Fuck, if he knew, if he's watching right now, he's probably pissed off he didn't get 5K for working. Yeah, that hours. 5K could have paid for a lot of dental work. Yeah. He's about to f- fire his agent right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, dude. I'm not judging him. I'm just saying that. That's... I'm not either. There's a lot of gaps to fill in, though. Yeah. You know, it's like there a Somalian to be done. teeth. Is, it's like a jack o' lantern. Like, you need some help. You got to fill in some of the. It's like an old fence. From the spots, yeah. Oh. yeah. It's a lot of work to be done. Uh, it's like there, a new yeah. cemetery. Where there's only a couple headstones, you know, and it's like not enough yeah. people have died to fill up the the, 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 the tombstones. <laughs> Which yet. is ironic right. because yeah. quite a few people have died in Somalia. Yeah, right? Probably today. <laughs> yeah. It's Probably not a great place is the point I'm making. Again, not passing judgment on Somalia. 
No, there's just probably places that are uh, nicer to live, I think. <clears throat> I think right now there's probably a, a, a good like demon in your mind that's saying, why the fuck did I do these guys' show when I can get <laughs> no. demonetized in like 45 <laughs> seconds after this goes out? We've gone over Anne Frank, uh, Somalians, yep. uh, midgets. Harambe, midgets, yep. the black midget, R.I.P. Mini, uh, who died in Minnie. Atlanta. And, R.I.P. Uh, Mini, R.I.P. Yeah, Harambe. You got you to paint it. It's... That's it. Listen, I you it's it's I got to I got to dabble in a little bit of everything, you know what mm. I'm saying? It's good. I I can be reserved in my own channel, but it's nice to reach out and and be on a show with some people that aren't afraid to, aren't afraid to talk about Anne Frank and Harambe, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, Who do you think wins in a fist fight between Anne Frank on crystal meth and PCP versus Harambe totally sober with AIDS? Whoa, why why does uh, why does the monkey have to have AIDS? Cuz that's where AIDS came from. Oh, was it an African monkey? I don't know where Harambe came Whoa, from. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. But Harambe that, sounds like an African name, doesn't it? It does. It doesn't sound like it does. Western European or anything. Yeah, I don't want to prejudge. What do you think Harambe's from, that name? Good Lord. I mean, where do monkeys come from? The Congo, maybe? Um, yeah. No, that's a different type, you know? He was a gorilla. Just... Yeah, he was, a, he was definitely a gorilla. <laughs> I'm not, look, I'm not sure where Harambe came from. For the sake of the argument, we'll say African, right? Well, he was born in Brownsville, Texas. Which actually, that might be the zoo. Is that the zoo that Burt Koontz worked at? Uh, I think for a little bit before he got shipped off to Cincinnati because that's yeah. where he got killed. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. All right. So, we got, what, a 14-year-old. Is she 14? Like, is she maxed out age? Or is she's, she younger? She's 14, but she's on. She's got, let, let's PCP. just say for the sake of this argument that she's mm -hmm. got weapons training. Okay. And weapons. And she's on PCP. Okay. And Harambe has late-stage AIDS. Full, right. full blown AIDS, and he's he might may or may not have pneumonia. So Freddie Mercury AIDS is yep. what he's got. Where it's like, hey, I've got one more performance left to me at Live Aid, and then I'm probably going to die like two months yeah, later. Yeah, like the last 15 minutes of the Dallas Buyers Club. Okay. Yeah. Okay. PCP. Right. Uh, yeah. whew, man, PCP I'd love to Frank see it. Day. Um, we have a sponsor, uh, MyBookie.com promo code Drinking Bros to double your deposit. I'd love for them to put something up and then maybe do some type of simulation for this. Yeah, it'll be the new Madden. Look, football may or may not be here in the fall. We're going to need something. Frank versus Harambe. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Frank on this one. Yeah, I think Frank's got the because yeah, of the I upper too. brain. She was clearly from the writing a pretty smart woman. <laughs> yeah, young woman. I think so, she'd figure yeah. out a yeah. way to fucking take him down. Yeah, I mean, if a bunch right, of dickholes at a zoo could figure it out, certainly Anne Frank could. Yeah, and look, Harambe fans don't come after us on the internet. Obviously, no, we're fans of Harambe too. This yes. is just all theoretical. Theoretical. Right. It, 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 Harambe in his in, at, at full strength, no question. But Harambe late stage AIDS. I mean, yeah, you got to yeah. give that to PCP and yeah. Frank every time. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, you, you got to go Frank. It's <clears> called this handicapping. Like, yeah, if you're going to play golf with That's somebody right. who's clearly better than you, I'm going to ask for some strokes. Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. Exactly. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna oh, man. If it was, I'd like if you to reach out to the devs so with AIDS, I would have I would have said something differently. What about Harambe? Has got a gun, but he's got to figure out how to use it. Same brain in Harambe, but he has a gun, and he's got to figure out how to use it. A handgun, or a, what are we talking, a Either shotgun? Way, doesn't matter. If it's a shotgun that sprays everywhere, I would give mm. it to Harambe. Now, if it's a pistol or a handgun where he's got to be accurate, yeah. I'm not going to give it to him. Mm. Nope. No, nope. but they could. I bet he could figure that out pretty quick, man. Those, those I feel he seemed like a pretty, pretty smart. smart guy. I mean, he was trying to save that kid. Yeah, it was it was clear mm -hmm. that the, the child was in danger, and he was, he, he was helping it. And I've watched that video... I don't know, somewhere in the thousands of times. <laughs> thousands you know, of times. times. Jesus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what remind me remind me again, Russ, what what year was it that we lost Harambe? It's been, it's been 2000, almost, 2016, yeah. I look a yeah, lot of so shit happened in twenty sixteen. We lost Yeah, uh, yeah, it did. Michael Jackson? No. We lost him years ago. <laughs> Yeah, that was like a decade ago, was it? <laughs> yeah, that was like a decade before that. We lost uh, was Bowie that year. We lost yep. uh, Tom Petty. We lost Harambe. Um, I think we lost Prince that year. Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder. Florence Henderson, Fidel Castro, R.I.P. Uh, Fidel yeah, Castro. Zsa Zsa Gabor, Carrie Fisher, George Michael, Alan Thicke. Doris Roberts from uh, Everyone Loves Raymond. We lost that year, too. That was a bad one. Oh, that's right. Well, that was a tough one. I remember seeing that one on Twitter. I, I welled up, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did it. A, funny. <laughs> I did a forty-eight minute tribute video to her on Instagram Live, and uh, you know, I didn't save it, so I don't have that. We got the, the guy Reynolds. from Jaws, Carrie Fisher. That's right. She oh. died on that fucking plane. Astronaut and U.S. Senator John Glenn. 
Anton Yelton. I remember that. That guy Wait, got. Carrie uh, Fisher didn't die on a plane. Yeah, she did. She uh, she collapsed on it in first class. Oh, not in a plane crash though. Yes, no, 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 no. And then they, right. they got her it's out like of drug, there. Yeah. Um, drug related. Anton Yelton. We, oh, he got crushed by the jeep. <clears throat> yeah, that was a fucking awful. Yeah, one. Yeah, that kid was a good actor too. Oh, he, that, he's great. That was by terrible, the way, Harambe yeah. is a Swahili term. Uh, so South African, I guess. Uh, there we go. Sure. Or communal sure. labor, yeah. which is that's a bunch of communist bullshit. That's uh, now I'm irritated that he was named Harambe. Yeah. I don't believe in communal <laughs> labor. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this. So now that we, he's from South Africa, and we and we know this, Leon. Um, What's that? If you put him up against Charlize Theron, mm. two Oof. South Africans, and uh, I'll go three. We'll go the guy with the bendy leg. Um, Oscar Pretorius. Oh, he shot his girlfriend through the door. Correct. Right well, so he's pre- already pre- got a kill under his belt. <clears throat> yeah. I was going to um, say, Pretorius already has the predisp- predisposition for murder, so that's an edge right off the bat. Yeah. Um, but Charlie Theron, I feel like she could snake. She could do something real snaky. I don't know much about her, but well, she's she, looking at her. Mad Max, Monster. What's that one that she was in recently where she was a she was a murderer? Uh, or she was uh, like a fuck. Atomic Blonde. Atomic Blonde, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and not only that, like her in real life, you know, she's got the fucking trans trans kid who they're she's switching over at like age eight. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That seems a little early, but so she's already nuts mm-hmm. on top of it, and she's had yeah. some weapons training. Like she's good sure. to go. So basically, you just need to have Anne Frank say a bunch <laughs> of transphobic shit. Oh wait, who is she fighting? She's so, fighting no, the we, gorilla. We got Harambe. Yeah, okay. we got Harambe, but we also got Bendy Leg. But it's we're gonna we're gonna give him a disadvantage. We're gonna take off his leg, his metal leg. Both he's oh. got two fake legs. Oh, he's got two. That's why uh, yeah, Cat Williams both, calls him both. Yeah. You're right. Because that's the noise it makes yes. when he's bouncing up and down. Like so we're going <laughs> legless Pretorius, uh, methed up uh, Charlize Theron, and then Harambe with. Uh, uh, we're gonna take away late stage AIDS, and we're gonna go. He's got a gun, but he's got to figure out how to use it. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you just take it and this is turned into like WrestleMania. Sm- at this point. Smash their skull. That's what I'm saying. Can we contact a developer to create these characters yeah. in a game so we could play this out? Well, honestly, what we'll On do Xbox is we'll have our Canadian animating company animate this conversation. <laughs> and that'll be way better than the real thing. Yeah, absolutely. Because we won't go to jail. <laughs> just for get it. the image of Harambe trying to fire a, like a, a Sig Sauer. It's like, that, it's, like a, it's like that scene from uh, Zoolander where they're trying to figure out where the files are in the computer. Yeah. He's smashing it on the top. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. You'll never come back to the show again. <laughs> no, We'll dude. never see you again. Dude, I need it. I need it. I need it. <laughs> uh, Leon, this is the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is uh, someone yeah. who's inspired you or helped you become the man you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Oh, fuck. Full disclosure, I'm 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 real bad at questions like this. Uh, it could be Harabe. I mean, it, it can be Frank. It could be a messed I mean, up Charlize. Like you know, the the way the way things are going, it it might be Harambe. Yeah, <laughs> I don't I, I don't have like anyone I've like looked to recently to be like, oh, I wanna I wanna do that or do this. I'm. I know that sounds stupid. Like, everyone should have a mentor or, like, an idol or something. All right, I'll, I'll say this. I like uh, – I am motivated by the work ethic of Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, that dude. Holy he's shit. a He's a beast. He's a fucking beast. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. I don't – everyone has their own opinion of him. But I think when it comes to how to be a fucking a, – you know, a pretty stand-up guy, like, that super successful and uh, charismatic, like, I, I feel like I, there's a lot to be learned from how he, how he carries himself. Yeah, and especially in you know this world, that guy's the master of social media. Um, and I feel like 100%. social media not only extended his career, but it's made it even bigger because he's been able to master every single facet of it. Uh, him and Kevin Hart. Man. Absolutely. Yep, yep. They're powerhouses, man, when it comes to knowing how to, to use their charisma on the internet. And, I mean, you look at... You know, The Rock, the, the influence he has just through his brands on the internet, that you know, you can you can have a director reach out and pay him however much money to make a movie with you, and that movie's going to s- exceed in the box office just because you brought The Rock on. And, like, he's got this massive fan base of billions of people. And let's be honest, not every movie he's done is any good. But he's done some good ones. But, you know, then you got your 
your uh, San Andreas and your your skyscraper and stuff, which are fun in their own right. But these movies are generating tons of revenue, which without the rock in them would make nothing, probably. Agreed. Agreed. Yep. Uh, listen, man, you're a funny, funny dude, dude. Uh, love your videos. Thank you for coming on the show today. Uh, tell dude, everybody where they can it. find you on social media and YouTube. Uh, Leon Lush everywhere, man. So just uh, YouTube.com slash Leon Lush. Twitter, Instagram, same thing. Just search it up. It'll come up. Uh, oh. that, fortunately, that name's not very popular, so it's kind of ubiquitous on Google now when you search it. So that helps. Oh. Awesome. Also, well, awesome. My, also by my the poor way, name uh, to fall back on. People who share a birthday with Harambe, uh, Eric Bischoff, remember him? Oh, yeah. From the WWE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Hell uh, yeah, Bischoff. Yeah. Eye, Lopez. No way. Yeah. R.I.P. to Damn. Too. Died the Rest time. in peace. Yeah. In the, so, both that was heroes. a Jeep accident, right? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. It's too bad. Well, uh, both are chasing waterfalls, sure. too. Uh, didn't she burn down some dude's house, Andre Risen? Uh, she did, and then uh, Harambe died underneath a waterfall. That's where he was shot. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. It all ties there's, together. There's, uh, there's, <laughs> Leon, we appreciate you being on. Yeah, I know this will be last the last time we ever see you in the rest of our lives. Nah, you, you, nah, you, you will literally I'll, be taking be off the air tomorrow. Yeah, there's a restraining I'll be, ba- I'll be right back. Now. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. You guys are, you guys are goat, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. <laughs> For Leon Lush, uh, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is Drinking Bros. Good night, everybody. Man, how fucking funny is that guy? Yeah. Holy shit. Um, I <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've been a big fan of his for a while. Just a fucking cool, down-to-earth dude. We thought we would lead with that tonight. Um, usually, we do sponsors and all that other shit first and do like a, a cock teaser. Once we got into Frank versus Harambe, yeah. things got big for me. Things got real. The, the stakes were upped, <clears throat> uh, so to speak. Uh, my dick went from... Uh, like a soft seven to like a harder eight. Like, like I still had an inch and a half left somewhere. Mm. You know, I'm obviously going to have to dig down deep for it, but it was coming up. He did say that it's gotten progressively harder to do things on YouTube. And I wanted to say at the time that I've also been getting progressively harder during this interview. (laughs) Because we had already said so much fucked up shit, I decided not to say it. Uh, And to our sponsors, we want to say we're sorry but we love you. I'm not sorry. Ah, uh, you are. You are and you aren't. Uh, first and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Look, kids, we're, we're down to 10 days left. That's it. Um, they said they would go through the quarantine. California doesn't count anymore. We're not counting California. We're all done with that. Yeah, fuck them. Uh, uh, most <clears throat> of the states are opening back up May 30th. Although the, Ludacris did say on first take on ESPN this morning that he wasn't, he didn't like the fact that we're opening up. Uh, he thinks we should all still be staying at home. So well, thank God <laughs> we that have a fucking Ludacris has chimed in with his fucking medical expertise. Shut the fuck up, you five foot eight piece of shit. He has ninety restaurants in Atlanta. I think he's just worried about getting sued. To be probably. honest with you, he's probably worried about not getting that fucking government movie check he's getting right now for not having his restaurants open. Maybe like he's getting paid to do nothing right now, essentially, which yeah. a, lot, a lot of people are. Um, and instead, like if he was at the at the, the the front door of his restaurant, I would say, "Move, bitch, get out the way." Nailed it, boom. Mm. Yeah, I know you love the puns. He's too small. Uh, very little guy. A lot of people don't know that he's a small guy. Yeah, very little guy. He was on against uh, Nelly on Versus the other night. That was a good show, actually. It was Nelly. Very nostalgic. Nelly's uh, Nelly's jacked. I like the fact that they went back to the '90s, early 2000s rap. It's great to like do a, a thing like that. I don't know if you could do that with with other versions of musicians like james hetfield versus like phil from from Pantera or from uh what do you call it whatever the fuck yeah i can't think of words anymore uh <laughs> celine dion versus mariah carey no no one what? would watch that i think they would no because there's no n- noise gates and filters on their voices <laughs> there <laughs> but you're just pressing play on and a also song, mariah so. carey looks like a chipmunk that's been stung by bees a bunch i'm still into it she's she is this uh horrific looking human being i'm still into it she got a lap band surgery she can she get it for her face too no she did not okay so that's where i'm at eh, I, I i'm still down with mariah carey i bet she fucking rages dude but donald trump could probably use a couple lose a couple pounds <laughs> <clears throat> I, you know, it's weird. I was telling uh, my wife this the other day because when we met him, he did not look as big in real life as he does in pictures and mm-hmm. on television. She was like, well, because well, last time we met him was in uh, 2016. Mm-hmm. And she goes, <laughs> presidency will absolutely run a human into the ground. And that's mm-hmm. true as well. So I'm, cu- I'm curious because, look, the, they're saying they're not doing 
uh, virtual realities on the Republican side. So I'm curious is is if uh, we'll, we'll get to meet them or if they're going to do fanless or whatever. But yeah. uh, uh, if so, I want to I want to see for myself in person, you know, because Sarah Huckabee Sanders, they made her look fucking awful. And uh, she's not that big in real life. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I don't think Nancy Pelosi has any business commenting on anybody's physical appearance. No, because she looks like the Wicked Witch of the West. Barely keeping those dentures in. And she's really shiny for some reason. I don't understand why. She's sweating all the time. Or Botox. What is that? Botox. Uh, so it stretches out your face and it makes it a little oilier. Mm. Uh, that's what it does. But she's 80. Look, she's trying to keep up with uh, AOCs of the of the you know the house. And it's tough. <laughs> um, fucking ghost bed is what we were talking about. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Two free pillows with a mattress. 36 month pay as you go program. No one on the interwebs is offering that. Go there now. There's like, I don't know, 10 days left of this before uh, the end of the world. And uh, as far as Ghostbed is concerned. Mm-hmm. Um, so go there now. Um, if you if you got that check from Papa Trump, uh, you, if you use that 36 month pay as you go program, boom, it's going to knock it down about $25 uh, a month on most of their products. Uh, <laughs> next up, D'Anthony, we got KillCliffCBD.com. Best in the biz. Best in the biz. Let's face it. Um, right now, you're probably sick of your family, your kids, and uh, maybe a couple of your neighbors who you trust. Mm-hmm. And you need 25 <laughs> milligrams of CBD pumping through those veins. Nobody's going to ju- judge you if you drink two. Mm-hmm. Uh, so go there now. If you go to KillCliffCBD.com today, type in the promo code Drinking Bros, you get 20% off and free shipping, which is a big deal. Also, look, this is the only company you can trust. That There's no THC in this stuff. You're not going to piss hot on drug tests. Uh, now, if you go down to a local head shop or fucking China, uh, they're going to fuck you over on this. So don't. As far as drinkables go, Killcliff is the, the biggest in the business, and that's the only brand you can trust. Go to KillcliffCBD.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros. Get your free shipping and 20% off. Last but not least, D'Anthony. ExpressVPN. We got expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. If you don't have a VPN right now, uh, you might as well strangle bait and not have a spotter. Yeah, you're probably getting butt fucked by China right now. Yeah, man. Uh, they're coming after everything. Everybody's at home. Nobody's doing anything. They're trying to steal your fucking unemployment. That was a thing last night. I just saw that on uh, CBS News. People stealing unemployment. Yes, checks. dude. They're, they're, they're putting in fake security, social security numbers and shit. They're going through your email, trying to find you all your personal information, and then plugging that in to get uh, unemployment benefits. And it's like, Jesus Christ, man. You got to have a VPN these days. Go to expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros today and get one. Seven bucks a month. If you sign up for a year, you get three months free at expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. Some of those fight matchups we had were great. We should get John Anik on to, to analyze some of those. Yeah, that he could actually pick a side because they're non UFC competitors. Yeah. This time. He's going to come on the show next week for Is the he? sports show. Yeah. He's the best. Yeah. He's the best. <clears throat> some people asked if, if we would have him permanently on. We're, we're working on it. We'd love yeah. to have him on. Uh, that dude is fantastic, dude. Yeah. Uh, one of the best voices in the biz. He's great. I noticed, I mean, not no offense to Felder and, and the guys at the last fight, but mm-hmm. I can tell when it's not Anik and Rogan there. Yeah, same. And you and I both said that at the same time when we were yeah. over Saturday night watching the fights. Uh, and then Jesse came in a few drinks in and said I disrespected her. Right. And I said, look, you, t- you talk to us like that. That's where the second wife comes in, you know? Uh, but we'll see if mybookie.com can put some odds up on a second wife. I haven't decided on it yet, Dan. On uh, the wife or the... All of it. Like the age, uh, the range it's going to be. Like if, if I want her to be deaf or mute or both. I think you go uh, like you adopt somebody from a different country <laughs> that's 17 and then wait two years or so and then just yeah wait for them to grow or you teach them change it up a little bit look oof that's the I mean, woody allen it's method. called it's called grooming and yeah. technically it's not illegal <laughs> <laughs> woody allen is living proof of it right now yeah he's alive uh morgan freeman's married to his granddaughter <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> i think they're dating I don't think so. D- uh, Papa Giorgio, check that. Proof that. I just just type in Morgan Freeman married to granddaughter, and I think it's. I think she's a, either a step granddaughter or something. There's going to be a picture of him with a white glove on and her, because uh, he had a like a gnarly car accident. Uh, so whatever it is, it's super weird. Does dude. he have a strong hand now? Yeah, he does. <laughs> he's got a strong hand and he's got a dead hand. 
Um, yeah, Ch- before she was so too. apparently she's been murdered by now. What? He was having an affair with her and she got murdered. Uh, apparently. Okay. Just hit a I accept. Who cares? Yeah, who cares? We don't care what cookies are on this goddamn. We get Express VPN on here. I don't give a shit. Um, so yeah, so are they partying together? Are they banging? Or she got murdered? Did she get murdered? Yeah, the the girl that he was banging got murdered. Wow. I don't, I don't know how it's his. He's eighty years old now, by the way. That's crazy. It's weird, man. That means Morgan Freeman's probably got like three, four years left tops. Yeah. When he dies, I'm gonna take over all of his narration. I'm gonna corner the market on Morgan Freeman because you can't patent a voice, you know. No, no, you can't. Uh, well, I'm really good at uh, picking out celebrity voices in uh, commercials. That's one of my talents. Mm. Like uh, insurance is John Krasinski. Okay, for example. Yeah, um, I could. You, you, if you, if you're out there in the Drinking Bros community and you're trying to figure out whose voice you're hearing in a commercial or something like that, and there's no face, send it to me. I promise you, I'll be able to figure it out. You're one of the best in the biz at that. Yeah, um, I, I have awful facial recognition, but I'm good with uh, songs and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, not not good with faces that much, but uh, yeah, man. Uh, Jesse's Jesse's really good at that as well. She can pick out the voices for you. But I want to get John Anik on here and go through some of these fictional fights. I like to make things a little more realistic. Like, uh, instead of how many toddlers do I think I could fight to the death? Mm -hmm. Like, it's me and 19 other dudes, 20 dudes, and we have to fight, I don't know, 6,000 toddlers or something like that. It's too many. No, it's not. Yeah. 6,000. How many dudes? 6,000 or 20 dudes. All right, are you guys, is it just punches or is it, is it guns? It's whatever, no, it's, it's fists and punches and feet. 4,000 is too much. They would no, it's 6,000. It's 300 per guy, basically. No. You don't think I could fight 300 children? You'd be exhausted after like no, two dude. minutes. No. Yes. You, you, I can tell you've never been in war before because there's a level of adrenaline that happens that's just different. No, I mean, here's what I have been in. I've been in a trampoline in a bouncy house with with. Ten children. Yeah, but your life, six your old. life wasn't on the line. That that kicks in another. Some level. would say it was. No. Yes, Dan. Yeah. I had a lot of cake right before I got in there, and my life I felt was endangered. No. I could have puked all over them myself, uh, and then the parents would have fucking absolutely buried me in the neighborhood. I've got I've got a couple of ideas. One, I want uh, this is actually from a drinking bro, but mm-hmm. it's based on an old joke, and I can't remember the comedian that did it. The comedian's joke was originally that politicians should have to wear jackets, like a NASCAR jacket, and everybody they're sponsored by should have to have a logo on that jacket, and they have to wear it to Congress every day. Oh, I'm a big fan. I like that. Yeah, the drinking bro. Helps out the economy. The drinking bro extended it to journalists. He wanted to include journalists in that. No shit. Yeah, so I think that's a good idea. So anyways, the point is I want to see different politicians fight Mm -hmm. each other. Like I want to see Beto fight Nancy Pelosi because I think Nancy would win. I'd like to see Lindsey Graham against Beto. I mean, they would just start making out, probably. That's right. Yeah, yeah, because they're both gay. Yeah, his yeah. Lindsey Graham's is—he's uh, got the "I'm not gay, I'm from Atlanta" voice. Yeah, he's gay. I'm not gay. <clears throat> I'm, I'm just from Atlanta. He's gay. He's a—he's a wealthy politician that's never been married. Never been married. No. I did not know. No that. children. No. Oh yeah, he's definitely a homosexual yeah, just, man. I, that which makes me kind of sad. Just be gay, dude. No one Well, cares. he's in the Republican Party, and it's like you know he's got to show some brass. He was that, military too. Yeah, he was a JAG officer in the Air Force. Yeah. Yeah, um, oh. but yeah, when when Annex on the show, I want I want to I'm gonna think about this for the next few days. Yeah, about who my dream matchups are. Yeah, and if you're uh, out there in the audience, go ahead and put your fucking thoughts about who you want to see matched up and have John Annex and us discuss in the comments here, and yep. we'll fucking pull them out. Comment below on YouTube and let us know who your dream fights would be and on what drugs and or weapons you want them to be using because yep. that's a big part of it. Like yeah, Harambe with the, the the fucking handgun, the pistol, trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, because if he doesn't have that pistol, if it's just him on his own, Mm -hmm. Harambe all day. But if he's got to, if he's forced to to squeeze the trig and uh, and eliminate somebody, that's a that's a whole different story. That's a different Harambe. I think he might be able to figure it out. Yeah, and then uh, 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 what was it? Anne Frank on PCP. Uh, yeah, Anne Frank Uh, on PCP. That was a great one. I don't I don't often applaud you on this show, but I will for that one. The PCP element to Anne Frank in that was just pure class on your part. Yep. Um, for real, because I I was not expecting you to say that, and then you came with PCP and Anne Frank, and I was like, boom, that was PB and J for me. That mm-hmm. really married that sandwich together, you know. Yep. Uh, but anyways, uh, check out Leon Lush on all of his uh, used tubes. 
his uh, social media platforms. Uh, great dude. And uh, great videos, man. Uh, one of my favorite, him and Brandon Rogers. Yeah, very funny guys. Two best in the biz on YouTube. In my Jared uh, Taylor actually has a fucking video. It's gonna, I think it's gonna be on Brandon's uh, YouTube. So mm -hmm. go follow Brandon Rogers on YouTube. But it's called uh, God. I don't even know if I should say it. it's called Chicken King. Yeah, and it's a spoof of something from this year that was really popular. Well, obviously, Pretty Tiger sure King. You can figure yeah, out what yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, um, but Brandon, pff, Brandon's on another level. Yeah. Love him. Love him. Uh, for D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. And if I said that before, you're welcome. <laughs>